So good morning. What we're gonna do is rip into a hillside that I found some really good appetites. These ones are like gem quality because they're so hard. Most cases with appetite, and you find it, you give it a squeeze, it just crushes down to almost like granulated sugar. So I'd like to try to get a really nice piece and try to make some jewelry. So maybe we'll do a video from beginning, finding the gemstone right through to making some jewelry from it. So join me, I think we'll have some fun, but it's gonna start with ripping into this hillside. So what we're seeing in this upper level is some mineralization like on that one, but it really is nothing, and then calcite. But this is all like forest floor, um, just topsoil. As soon as we start getting lower, it starts getting more interesting. And just pushing it down into a bucket, which I can sift. So we'll check each level as we go down. Nothing all that interesting in this level, which is to be expected. Okay, now we're into, that'll be an anthem ball again. I'll keep that. So, what I could see is there's nothing really up in this level, but I may want to take out some of these bigger rocks to get down to what's below. The good stuff is down here. Okay, so there's my first little appetite. See that? Okay, there's another broken appetite. Here's an appetite crystal. Not sure what that is. It's a big old anthem ball. What are you? Certainly has a crystal face on it. I think it's an anthem ball. Harvesting potatoes. Okay, let's do some digging. Is that right there? There's a little appetite. <laughs> there we go. Here's another one. All kinds of them down here, little ones. Let's scrape that out. Just with fingers. See what we can do, like, it's not very big, but it's nice and bright. Okay, a lot of little chips. Where are you coming from? Huh. Almost yellowish. Okay. 
I just got that one out. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's coming out like candy now. See that? That's an answer ball. That's an answer ball. All the rest are appetites. There's a little appetite. Maybe a broken appetite. presents on Christmas Day. You know there's something there, but you don't know what. Hit the ball and calcite maybe? Hit the ball for sure. Every time about to give up. Appetite. Not give up, but just on that particular section. Okay. You know, it's very likely that all the appetites here came from this calcite hump. Look at that. It's a calcite crystal. It'll just pull apart with my hands. And we can see some fresh appetites down amongst this calcite. <laughs> Look at that one. And there's more. Beauty. It wiggles. That one might need just a little bit of persuading. Right there. There we go. See anything? Not really. There's one right there. Can come out. There it is. Oh, this is too easy. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm just suggesting that this place is loaded. Right here. The appetites. It's a pocket. So here are the crystals I collected. Next step, 
will send them to my friend Laura, who is an expert jewelry maker, and she will wire wrap one of these bad boys. Hope you enjoy it. I look forward to it. Hey everyone, so this is the making part of the video. I'm gonna set this amazing green aragonite, which was rock hounded around Halliburton in Ontario. So we're talking mid north by Me Miner. He has his own YouTube channel and is just a really great overall guy. And he sent me the stone to set so his people and his amazing followers could see something to do with these stones that they rock hound. The method I'm using is called wire wrapping. Um, I technically combine two methods. There's wire wrapping and wire weaving. This will look easier than it is for most people. That is your heads up. But it doesn't mean not to give it a go if you want to. So what I first do is I'm creating what I call a traditional setting. If you look at my website, designsbynaturegems.com, you will notice a lot of my statement pieces will have three wires along the side. That is for a traditional setting. And that traditional setting is really good for any stone that's asymmetrical, which means it's not a regular cut. It hasn't been shaped, which is its own form of artwork. So first, this is 18 gauge wire. I prefer a little thicker. Some people prefer thinner. Depending on your stone, you can choose different gauges. The biggest thing is the higher the gauge, the thicker, the lower the number. That's 22, this is smaller. I'm gonna cut four parts of this. Um, when I was taught how to do this, I was told cut 10 centimeters. So we're talking about like two, three, three and a half inches. I don't do that anymore. I eye it because I've done this for so long. And I edited obviously my design from five years ago when I learned how to do this. Every time I use wire, I make sure to close it and I am showing you guys the brand I use on purpose. Um, it's just because for my hands, I find it the easiest. There's a bunch of brands out there. Always feel free to play. Each brand, of course, has its strengths and negatives. And that, if you have questions, you can message me. I'm happy to give a little bit of info. But the biggest thing is to always feel free to play. So right now, I'm wrapping the middle section. So I round these three thicker wires. I took one of the thinners. I just started wrapping it around. If you watch my hands, I'm holding it here. I'm just going around. And then I flatten it using what's called flat nose pliers. These style flat nose pliers are a little smaller than you get from a lot of wire wrapping suppliers. It's because they're actually used in smithing, another type of design work I do. So you push this closed, make it nice and pretty. Again, this is going to look a lot easier than it is if you're just trying this out, so please be patient with yourself. Then you cut it off, so you have both sides for me are always on the inside of where the stone will be. That's to keep things from catching or hurting someone or unraveling. Now I'm going to put a piece here and a piece here. Going around it again. There we are. I'm gonna leave that unfinished because I may end up having to cut that off. And the only reason I know that is from doing this for five years. Just experience like anything else that is an art or a skill. Experience makes you better. And I'm right, I will have to cut it off. this piece. So when I'm cutting, I'm just using cutters. There's a bunch of type of cutters out there, like any other type of pliers. My biggest thing is make sure please they connect each other when they close. If they don't, you're going to have a lot harder time cutting wire. And actually it indicates to me those cutters are meant for thicker wire or more hardware construction work than actually jewelry making. Which is again, its own conversation piece. So, all right. I've done the sides. You see they're pushed together. That's on purpose, so it looks nice. Now I'm doing the shaping. This part I usually actually do on my knee because it gives a bit of wonderful little fleshy bounce that is easier when you push a stone in. 
on here, you're gonna see me struggle a bit. So just saying it out loud. Now what I've noticed is this is a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hexagon. It, this piece is beautiful because it has a longer, flatter back. That's actually gonna help me out a lot right now. If this wasn't there, I'd really be wanting to put it on my knee or my leg to make things work. Because it has a flat bottom, I bend one side so I can get a kind of like a nook in. And I bend the other side. And I just start using my eyeing ability for it to be about center or where I'm going to loop it together. And that's just the setting currently, not having been an authority yet to fit the stone. So I'm re straightening this part here, and that little fourth piece of wire I cut uh, is over here. It got caught under my pliers. So you hold both of them together. This part's actually much harder than it looks. I sometimes struggle with it. If you're just pulling the two pieces together, I'm holding it using this hand, my thumb to push one side, my finger to push the other, and the other hand, I'm wrapping it around. Little pro tip, one of my fingers is holding this piece of wire. That's gonna keep it from moving too much. If I wasn't doing that, this would be moving everywhere. It'd be a lot harder than it looks. So again, closing that up. And I switch hands, I'm still holding this. I don't feel like having it moving. Wire is slippery, it's a metal, there's a clear coating on it. I want it to stay in one place. So, And I use what's called round wire, which adds to that. There is flat wire, it is a lot easier to work with. There's square wire, it is easier to work with. I use round wire. There you go, that's the setting pretty much. So, if you wanted to think in steps, what we did there is like all step one and there was sub steps underneath it, if you're a linear thinker. Now I'm heading into step two where I actually set the stone itself. So for this, I have people who use these when I teach them for pulling out the wire. I don't recommend it, but for some people they need it. If you wanna use flat nose, feel free. I only use round nose, it's because you have round and round, so there's actually less surface area, so when you pull, you're not gonna nick the wires easily. Again, this is a personal choice. So I pull it out slightly, and I pull it out this way. And then I do it above, I do it all on one side, and then I do the others. I will be playing with this, this is not near done yet. Two. One, two. So you see I've pulled it out somewhat. I am fully aware this may get played with, but this is just me doing it. I'm checking the center because I don't want to mess up any of these kind of connection points. Then I'm doing the next side. Yeah. The only reason this looks so easy is because I've done this for five years because that's actually not. Now I'm putting in the stone. This is where usually I put it on my leg. I don't have a leg. I have the ground. So let's we'll see how this goes. I use the round nose pliers to pull it slightly. Now aragonite's not the hardest stone in the world. Stones have different densities and hardness and as that works that affects how I'm putting it in. So I have to be careful not to push too hard. I can break a stone. This one, I didn't have them in a bag. This was one stone. I was actually gonna use this one to show you because it was bigger. I brought two just in case and sure enough, there was a fissure, there was pressure and it broke. This is not the softest stone in the world. Be aware of the hardness of your stones as you work with them. Because if you're not, I guarantee you'll break them. <laughs> it's just kind of how it works. And you will learn that way, which is fine. That's a different way of learning. You see me holding the stone and flipping it over. You're also seeing maybe why I say I like using my leg. There's little bits hiding here that come off it because this is raw, this is aragonite. It's not a hard, hard stone. And even as I'm turning it, I'm holding pressure to keep this in here. My leg is soft. This <laughs> is easier. So that's what softness does. So. <laughs> One and two. Okay, I officially set it. That's the stone set. I check this side, it looks solid. I give it a wiggle. 
you will see that there are some non-straight lines. That's based on the fact the stone is not straight. I could play with them based on the stone itself. I will only wait to the end once I finish everything else, mainly because it's a softer stone and I don't want to hurt the setting. Now I just straighten this part. Make sure that's good. Make sure that's still centered. All right, so now I've picked up the stone. I'm centering a bit the, where I've put these two together. That's just me because I want to be a vertical loop to connect. And what I do next is I just choose one of these wires that will make that loop and I just wrap the other ones around. This whole time I am holding the stone harder than it looks in that setting because the said stone is not secure yet. It's only secured when I do these next couple of steps. Again, this is to me a part three if you're a linear thinker. My style involves hiding the end, so I turn them and push them in. Um, if I'm doing a more feminine design, oh, if I'm doing a more feminine design, just pushing in that end, I am actually likely to leave them out. The reason is, is for my more feminine designs, I leave more swirls, kind of like an organic vibe to it. My more masculine ones, they're there, but not as much. This also edits depending on the person's personality. So for example, some guys are extremely organic and vibey and this world fit them. Some women are not. You never know until you kind of meet someone or you start talking to them. All right. On the other side, you still have the three ends. Two of these ends I'm gonna use for the setting. And the last step, this end is gonna go around. And you're seeing as I'm going around, I'm getting this nice kind of top happening. And you're not noticing the asymmetry as much because this is balancing that. Right. All right, so now we are in step four. Step four is the weaving step. So at the beginning, I mentioned I do two types of thing, wire work and wire weaving. Weaving is literally like a textile work. So if you've done basket weaving or any weaving in textiles, this is a variation. It's just with metal. The biggest hint is less give in the material. So I usually take out a good amount, put this back on so it doesn't all go loose on me. And I just start weaving. Are you seeing me just wrap it around one side? Now, if you're learning to wire wrap, I would recommend at least do a few good cages by itself. You can just wrap them around like we did here, this part before doing any of the weaving. The weaving actually is its own skill set, just as a heads up. But if you are adventurous, or you just feel like, ah, I got this, do whatever you feel like, give it a go. All right, my design is just gonna go around both because I like that. At this point, you're going more into the artistic process of this because there is a lot of free reign in weaving. And in truth, this sometimes takes over 10 minutes, so I'm only going to do a little bit I can, or we'll see how quick I can go. I'm not going to go into the weaving section right now because it's different than the rest. The main thing is for you to set a stone, and that's what I'm showing you. I weave because that's how my work and my design is shown. So, crossing. Give you an idea. That's how much I've done. So, I'm going to pause here and leave this part out and not finish it in this video because this is still about like six, seven minutes of me just wrapping. Instead, I'm going to put it here and say you could easily just wrap these around like this. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut the loop a little harder for me to work with when I finish it, but at least then you will have a finished piece and I will mostly finish piece. So I cut what I think I need, usually about an inch and a half. I use round nose pliers because I want the loop to be circle. I hold the end and I turn it. Okay, I center. So when this piece is done, when this weaving section, you essentially, as is, let me rephrase that. If you don't do the weaving section, this pretty much would be your finished piece. If you do the weaving section, 
then you can put that anywhere around and I'm happy to do a pendant from this point just in the weaving section in the future. Because these are so different, I, this takes a lot of time right there. But yeah, you get the idea of pretty much how to set a stone in wire. Um, you see how it's slightly asymmetrical. I probably will finish that off at the very end and make that more symmetry. But again, that's just practice. And yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. That is how to set a stone in wire.